told me to give him 15 seconds. All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural meeting of the Lunenburg Master Plan Steering Committee. Uh, my name is Adam Burney. I'm the Land Use Director. I'm going to go around the table and Zoom and ask folks to introduce themselves and let us know what committee they're representing. Debbie Lincoln, Council on Aging. Uh, Tim Wilsmer, uh, the Planning Board. We'll start with you, Dick. You're the first one on my screen. Dick Mayu, Trust Lumberg Public Library. All right. How about you, Lou? Uh, Lou Franco, uh, Select Board. All right, Jerry. Great. I represent no committee. I am a normal townsfolk. And you are. <laughs> What's your name? Jerry, yep. In introduce yourself, please. Oh, my name is Jerry Reed. Uh, my wife is at the planning board, Amanda Reed, but I'm an engineer for Salesforce, and I just want to get more involved in town activities and see how everything works out and plans out, but I think I can bring some value to the community. Awesome. And last but not least, Josie. Hi. Sorry, everybody, for the delay. My name is Josie Gilchrist. I'm on the Economic Development Committee. All right. Great. Uh, yeah. So, uh, f oh, and I. I yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Fatimi Bouddheri. Um, I'm with the consultant with Over Under. And to my left, I, I left you out, Rami. I apologize. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rami Osamaki. I'm a principal at Over Under. <laughs> All right. So, the first order of business will be committee organization. Uh, we've got a, a big committee and w we're going to need a chair who can keep everybody in line and, and keep things moving, uh, but also make sure people get here and uh, we have decent attendance. So at this point, I'll take nominations from the folks in attendance. If anybody's interested, p please feel free to throw your name out there as someone who would like to be nominated. I think some people actually turn their cameras off on Zoom. <laughs> I'm hoping the guy in the middle up there wears a Concord Academy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that if nobody else is interested. I'll put my name off. All right, does someone want to make a nomination? I can nominate Josie Gilchrist for chair of the Master Planning Committee. Do I have a second? Second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? If I will call. Evan? Aye. Karen? Aye. Mrs. Lincoln? Deb? <laughs> it's better. I, I paused on your name. I, I, I it's blanked on the quite all right. It's Debbie. Aye. Debbie. Tim? Aye. Uh, Lou? OK, I had a little technical difficulty uh, with the name. Who was not there? Josie Gilchrist. Aye. Dick? Aye. Uh, Jerry? <laughs> I think you were muted, Jerry. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Was that an aye? Can I give a thumbs up, maybe? Okay. Aye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Josie, I'll, uh, now that you don't have a choice anymore, I'll, I'll give you a vote. Uh, I need a verbal vote, Josie. Okay. I'm so sorry. My four-year-old walked by the okay. screen, and I did not hear the last word. Uh, you've been nominated, and there's seven votes in favor. You're the last to vote. Oh. I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I'll take uh, nominations for vice chair. Don't all jump at once. I'd be willing to take the position if nobody else wants to. I think Tim sounds perfect to me. Wonderful. I will make a motion nominating Tim Wilmer. Do I have a second? Second. Any other nominations? Any other interested parties? No, by roll call vote. Evan? Aye. Karen? Aye. Debbie? Aye. Tim? Aye. 
Dick? Aye. Lou? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Wonderful. Now I'll turn the meeting over to the chair. We call in this order? Oh, we're, we're, uh, we've been in order for a little while. <laughs> so you're going to have to refresh my, uh, you're calling it to the chair. What do you want me to do here? Well, it's your meeting now, Madam Chair. Um, okay. So the next item on the agenda would be the overview of the master plan process. If you'd like me to start that, I can do that. We're going to go ahead with yes on that. So All right. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who aren't aware, uh, the master plan is governed by the general laws. It requires the town every 10 years, which is almost farcical because not many communities actually are able to do a master plan every 10 years. The process is generally a two year process, so that then makes it like an eight year plan. Uh, oftentimes it's more like 20 or more years. Uh, so I would say 20 years is a, a realistic goal uh, and it sets sort of a roadmap for the totality of the community and policy direction. It's a living document that's not intended to be prescriptive in application, but more to set lofty goals and more reachable objectives that the town can do to use to, to achieve the vision that's put forward. Uh, and it's often a widely public process to gain the uh, footprint of where we are in time currently and work with members of the public to identify where we'd like to be over time. Um, you all have received a copy of the steering committee's charge um, and that really is based on what we talked about and and the general uh, movement through laying out a roadmap for the community. Uh, we've retained over under associates, RKG and <coughs> associates as a team um, under the lead of, of over under to assist us in not only data gathering and interpretation uh, but also their public outreach and their public process uh, the planning board felt was going to be the most effective and the most wide-reaching here in town um, and it was the most tailored to what the town sort of was looking for and, and had asked for in its, its RFP. Um, so <coughs> now that I've given you sort of 10,000 feet, I'm going to turn it over to Rami and let him walk through what Over Under has done up to this point and what the sort of global roadmap looks like for the next 18 or so months. Thank you, Adam. <coughs> Hello, everyone. I, I, some of your faces are familiar from the last time uh, we met in this very room uh, back in June. Uh, we are, uh, as Adam said, uh, leading this group. We've got a, a great team, RKG, our uh, very well regarded for the work they do in economic planning in particular, but they also have expertise in transportation, uh, uh, public facilities, and, and uh, a lot of other aspects that are covered here. Um, uh, Inez Associates are also <coughs> on our team. Uh, Emily Inez is um, a real expert. Uh, with uh, zoning and how zoning gets reworked in, in, in um, um, achievable ways. <laughs> Let's put it that way because as you all know, zoning can be a hefty challenge. So, but let me back up a second and, and just describe a little bit the, the way a plan, the way the state asks us to sort of look at a plan and it. There are several topics involved, um, uh, land use, uh, economic development, uh, housing, transportation, uh, cultural and historical resources, open space and recreation, and um, yeah, that's it. That's the seven plus 
implementation. So after we sort of look at the, we look at the town and those through those lenses, uh, make recommendations uh, after discussing um, with the town and sort of through our you know research uh, during the discovery period, and then sort of lay out a suggested uh, roadmap. The implementation part that, that has to do specifically with you know, if these are the goals you want to achieve, what are the sort of economic uh, drivers to 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 do this, uh, what sort of grants and, uh, and and government programs should you be looking at, uh, what aspects of the zone of the zoning code will you want to change, etc. So like, that's where it gets a little more specific. But we're a ways uh, uh, from that final. Uh, piece of it, we like to think of the the planning process as sort of a three phases: um, what we call discovery, uh, and then recommendations, and then the report. The biggest of those is the sort of recommendations, but right now we're still in this sort of di discovery phase. We're we began officially April. Yes. May, so, okay, you know, kick off with yeah, so we're still sort of in that first phase of discovery, um, and that involves, um, you know, having our, that the first uh, public meeting that we had. But I, but we, and though it was great to meet all of you that, that we met at that meeting, it was a small group. I think the consultants and the um, attendees were about it was a one to one ratio <laughs> or less. So we'd like to change that and, and, and really hear from more of you. Uh, uh, as, so I don't, I don't feel like we will have done our homework until, until we have far more um, community uh, engagement. We had some great suggestions at that meeting that we've already started to implement. I think we're planning to sort of, um, now that folks are back at school and um, you know, summer life has died down, we're back into our, our, our regular rhythms, sort of uh, be here physically um, more often. So um, be at um, events like uh, farmers markets and, and, and other things and be present at homecoming uh, as a way to kind of get the word out. And, Get the word out about what? Uh, the word about about the fact that this plan is happening, uh, about the that there will be a sort of second online opportunity. We're developing a website right now. Um, there'll be another uh, survey in, involved in that, but also just just to get the word out about the website that there will be a website. I think what do we agree on? Plan, plan Lunenberg. Plan Lunenberg dot com. Um, um, so it's easy to remember, and it'll be kind of the clearinghouse for, uh, you know, first stop shop where to go to get information. And then we'll keep that current uh, and push all sorts of things like the survey, but also a, a meeting that we're hoping to hold in, uh, uh, in, in um, late October, early November that I'd like to talk to you about. But you guys, in particular, this, this committee, this was something we also asked for. We, we, we said to Adam, like, it, it makes most sense for us to work with uh, a sort of steering committee because Adam is fantastic, but it would then just be the consultants and, and Adam, and that's, that's, it'll be much more successful if you have a steering committee that is sort of representative of the um, town. In, in, a, in, in a myriad of ways, uh, sort of demographically, but also sort of organizationally. Um, and then you become the folks that, uh, that we sort of um, test ideas with. As, as we start to develop things, we say, hey, what do you think about this? And, oh, that's interesting, this one's not, and maybe put this one to the side. Um, and, and you also become, you become the owners of of the plan as it develops, right? Because you've, you've helped shape it um, and you can explain it to those who aren't here um, and you can um, encourage them to attend 
<laughs> attend events as, as things develop. And I think it's a, it's in our experience has been a very useful way, uh, a, a productive way of, of getting to know the town and, and, and having the town have real ownership of the of the process. Uh, I like to say the steering committee is the champions of the plan. Yeah, you're out, you know, touting it at your meetings and not even anything crazy. Just oh, this is what's happening and bringing it to an audience that the planning board might not see or might not tune in on a random Monday to cable access or whose husband is out of town and they can't figure out how to turn on the TV so they <laughs> read a book. Um, you know, and that, and like you said, bouncing ideas. And not that you're the end all be all, but you can, you've all been around enough to know what's gonna fly and what might not. Yeah, and, and that's not to say that you're gonna love every idea that comes a, across which is is great actually knowing that is useful also it has a real utility so we could you know shape things that, can, that that reflect your priorities and values which is ultimately the point of this whole exercise so that that's where we are kind of at the, at the high level I think as you know we're now somehow in the middle of September I'm not, I'm not sure how this has happened already but um, I would say from here to November, we're, we're looking to uh, be, a, you know, a, around, uh, at least not, not on a daily basis, but on, on a you know, regular basis, we'll show up at <coughs> events. We want to really be part of, no, I mean, we want to be present at homecoming. We don't want to steal the, the show, but we want to we be there because it, it sounds like, I think it, it, it sounds like something that, where a lot of people gather, um, so let's make use of that. I'm open to other suggestions. Um, and hopefully we can look at um, our next public meeting uh, at the end of October, beginning of November, that would work. We could lock that down early enough and start to get the word out about that. And we want to do that in a way, in a sort of we hope to have a sort of a large group, you know, largish group uh, of people at that meeting. Um, that at that meeting will sort of sh the intention is to show some of the things that we have kind of documented about um, Lunenburg. Uh, sort of be a kind of first pass at. One of, the, one of the early uh, things that we're to deliver is uh, an existing conditions report. So that's you know, sort of two, two things in this first phase that kind of close, close out this first phase, the discoveries. One is a community engagement plan, which if, if you haven't seen yet, we'll, we'll sh I can, I'll be happy to share that with you. Uh, the second is the, um, the uh, existing conditions report. And um, that, that meeting, the public meeting, would be sort of uh, an opportunity to present that uh, at that meeting. And I, I should say, for us, these kind of meetings are least successful when the consultants are on a dais talking for 90 minutes. <clears throat> and that's a secular. So we really try to make these entertaining. Um, let's sort of break it up if there's a large enough group kind of break it into different groups so you can kind of get discussions going and we try to what we say gamify the experience so there there are different kind of games to, to play kind of and kind of and, and out of those games we kind of tease out people's uh, um, attitudes towards different aspects uh, uh, of the town and town life and, and the physical uh, area as well. So the hope is that you know those will be real moments for engagement rather than sort of one way kind of delivery of information. That's my ramble. And I, and I think that's really what this is all about is getting people to come out and say this is where Lunenburg should be, this is what we want, and one person saying it doesn't mean anything, it's getting a collective voice that, you know, finds some common thread, and I don't think we're looking to say, oh, well, we should have this type of restaurant, but here's the type of economic development that we want. If anybody who's participated in town government 
I know we've had multiple conversations about economic development and there's always three or four definitions and no one's ever able to agree and everyone throws their hands up and it never comes back. And this, this will lay out some of those things and identify, like I said, goals. You know, goals should be unachievable. They should be, you know, gold line streets and unicorn rides for everyone and you know, maybe you never get there, but you are, are striving for that and the objectives are things you can do little bits at a time that help move that forward. Um, so yeah. that's, that's my take on it. Yeah. And, and, the, and the sort of establishing of goals always takes a little longer than, than you think, but they become very important because that's actually the piece that I didn't include, is that goals, goals and vision um, are sort of separate chapter, if you will, of, 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 of a comprehensive master plan. And when you, you know, once we sort of, we've, we've left and you kind of have the plan, you're moving forward and you're thinking about different aspects of things you want to develop, whether it's what do you do with uh, existing uh, 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 town-owned buildings or town-owned land or, or you know, uh, some other sort of economic development or transportation, Going back to the goals and the vision becomes a very, you know, well, this is what we decided as a town is, is of value to us. Um, so that, those are important, mm -hmm. as well as aspirational. So I, I think, I don't know, Adam um, or Josie, what, what you, you think is, is reasonable to meet with us, I mean, I think in, in ways you need to sort of sit amongst yourselves and, and, and figure out how, what is a reasonable commitment. Uh, um, in my mind, an ideal world, would we be able to meet with you every month or every other month that the, you know, I, I know everyone's busy and has, have a million things to do, but um, it's always helpful to, to sort of bounce ideas off of people and, and hear back, um, you know, when, what time, I am assuming all of your meetings are in the evening, is that pretty much across the board? Um, Generally, yeah. I think of something of this magnitude um, as frequent as we can, the better. Um, and that's something that we are working on and generally in the evenings. And I think Adam has a kind of a good perspective on the time or the date that generally works best for everybody. I know personally I can be flexible, but if we take everybody's, um, their own schedules in mind, I think that may be, that may take a while. So maybe <clears throat> just show of hands or however we want to do it of if evenings definitely work best for everybody at around this time did this was this comfortable for everybody it was yeah would you prefer daytime meetings Deb, debbie or just i know monday is challenging it's yeah and and you know so we meet every other monday i think evan meets on the off mondays that we don't uh so i don't know if that makes thursdays better but then FinCom meets every, every other Thursday. Is it first and third or second and fourth? Uh, it is second and fourth. So I know that generally people, I mean, a lot of the committees seem to gather together in the evenings. Is there a reason why we don't gather early in the morning, say at 7? Or is that... Because I don't start work until 8. <laughs> 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 um, no, I... So, I I think seven's tough because you've yeah. got kids and school and yeah, you know work and all of that. I, I mean, what about the first Thursday of each month? Is that a day that works for most of the folks? For me personally, it does. Yes. Generally. I mean, you know, and clearly that's a moving target, but it's at least something. Mondays clearly there's a lot of conflict. Tuesdays is select board. Wednesdays is conservation or zoning. Um, Thursdays is, is FinCom is the, really the one that meets on Thursdays, and if they meet two and four, and we that's we for now. that's well that's for now. But yeah, 
So the first Thursday at this time at six. So that's only three meetings. It's only three meetings. So there's a quorum up there. <laughs> there is, but we also have four open seats for, for at large members. So, um, you know, and if we meet at six, your meetings are at seven. And if we can, even if we can get you for 45 minutes, that might be workable. So, does it sound like the first Thursday is when, when we want to do this? So, let me ask this question. And the first Thursday is back. Um, there was mention of one of the, is it the next meeting that you want to be more of a community <coughs> or is it? No, I'm sorry, that's sort of, that's sort of parallel to this effort. Okay. Uh, it's a, a, and that would be, so that wouldn't take the place of this okay. meeting. Perfect. That that would be. I only bring that up because I know homecoming is like the 20-something. 21st. Yeah. And so I can tell you from um, Parks has been doing a big um, project to get off the ground for one of our local parks. And we had a decent turnout. And we had a decent turnout because of boots on the grounds in the days prior. So if you were looking to do something um, at, like if, you're, if your company was going to attend homecoming, you'd want to do something pretty fairly quickly after that. So I just wanted to make sure it's, we were. That's exactly what Rami said to me today. We, we have a bi-weekly check-in and he said, you know, we want to come to homecoming. We should really strike right after that yeah, to get exactly. that public meeting. Yeah. And we were successful with that and we were successful with running ads and um, we ran an ad at our local paper and mm -hmm. we had flyers distributed all over the community that was posted. So um, that worked for us. So I agree with him. Maybe I need a job with you. <laughs> okay, so that's separate from our... It is. Yes. Perfect. If I, if I could, for the, uh, for the consultant, uh, the library went through, over the last couple of years, a strategic plan, which is sort of, I guess, a, a mini master plan but it looked extensively at the community uh, as a whole and where we as a library board thought the library should be headed. And that is on the library website and might be of some interest in terms of everybody, but especially in terms of the consultant to take a look and see what came out of that particular thing and where the library is one entity in the town uh, thinks the library should be going and dragging the town with it, sort of. Thank you. That's very helpful. We'll take a look at that. It looks like we're already moving into committee comment. Look at that, Josie. You're moving this meeting right along. <laughs> My <country>. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does anybody else have committee comment? I want to be respectful of everybody's time. I know we're we're cutting it close. Yeah, I actually was supposed to check into the library 20 minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, um, I, we, I really need to leave, like, yesterday. <laughs> I see... Um. I see Mr. So, Scalabrini. I might ask if, you, if he has any public comment just to, yeah. just to get that wrapped up and then we can hit the adjournment and you can bail. I do. Um, I'm Tony Scalabrini. I live at Five Valley Road. Uh, I'm also the chair of the Architectural Preservation District Commission. And I'm very interested in the plan. Uh, part of it is because I'm an engineer, and uh, engineers like plans because that's the way you bring projects to a successful conclusion. Um, so I have a couple questions. Uh, where is, first of all, I couldn't agree with you more, the consultant, in terms of saying you got to get community engaged, you know, for this master plan to have any kind of an impact and any kind of a buy-in to the plan. And you mentioned a community engagement plan. And uh, where might that be? Because I feel like I've been an, an active seeker of information about the master planning process. In fact, believe it or not, I've looked at all the master planning documents that are on the uh, Lunenburg website, and quite honestly, this planning process is woefully behind schedule. <clears throat> That'll lead to another question. But so, where is the community engagement plan that you mentioned? 
that's not rhetorical. Where where it actually is it? It's yeah. Made, I, we we the, we discussed it with the planning board. Planning I don't know that it's posted. Yeah, yeah. So is it any place for us to see? Because, like I said, I've been actively pursuing information about the master planning process, and I don't see it. You know, so like if you're going to get us engaged, there's got to be, you know, a, a full court press on engagement. I, I agree. Okay. We so the sec second question is, when will the website be up and running? Very soon. Uh, days or weeks? Two weeks. Okay. Um, and then what kind of survey are you planning on putting on the, uh, the website? And will there be an active survey process or just a passive survey process? Meaning that you'll post uh, on the website, I'm assuming, a mm -hmm. survey, and, and it'll say, hey, tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then will there be any active uh, recruitment of ideas by members of the consultant team. So that's kind of a multi-part question. I guess I'm, I'm not understanding the difference. One, one is that I, as a citizen, will take my time to, to fill out a survey. Mm -hmm. The other process is where the consultant comes out and grabs people at various places. You I know, see. At I supermarkets, see. Right, right. at you know, mar at uh, Dick's Garden Market, you know, so on and so forth. At homecoming. Will there be any kind of uh, active survey work like that? Yes, there will be. That's, okay. that's part of why we would be there. Yeah. All right. Um, so I got a general question. This is directed to the cons consultant because you've been in this business, I'm assuming, of doing master plans for communities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the state of Massachusetts. Why is there a legislative requirement for a plan every 10 years but it's not actually being met by communities. Now you got to remember, I'm I'm an, I'm an out of town guy. I'm, I'm new to the town of Lunenburg, relatively. And, new. But, but your question could be asked in any one of the 351 municipalities in the Commonwealth. It's, it's a fair question. It's generally an unfunded mandate thing. Um, I worked in a community that did their first master plan in 50 years at one point. Um, yeah. So it's I mean, that's not uncommon. yeah. I mean the the. The Commonwealth doesn't actively seek to enforce the statutory requirement. I would say. But does does but Adam? Does that mean it doesn't? If it's an unfunded requirement and it's not being met, does that mean that this process really isn't important? No, it doesn't mean that. No, and I, I would say through one way or the other, funding is being released more often in the past. 10 years, and especially in the past five years, obviously, um, to increase the frequency of master plans. So now they are closer to 15 years, between 10 years even. But it, historically, it's been much more daylight between plans. Why do you think it's important that Lumenberg does this plan? Honestly, I, th I mean, I think the most important part is that you are as a community, which has changed a lot in, in the last 10, 15 years. I mean, the, the, the numbers are telling us that. The folks we've talked to are telling us that. It's moving from uh, what was primarily a rural, agriculturally based community to something else, to, you know, particularly, and the, and the pandemic kind of accelerated that. Okay, so getting together and finding out who everyone is and talking to each other and figuring out together what your collective values are is a very important thing. And from those, we hopefully will together identify a series of initiatives that you're not going to please everyone all the time, but that you as a community want to do to move, move the forward. And that's one thing that always happens is time moves forward. So how are you going to address it? How will you meet change? Um, last question. Uh, how was the steering committee formed? The planning board put together a charge and set out the membership and solicited input or solicited volunteers from the committees listed and has six at-large members, two of which they've appointed. 
So how big will the committee be? It'll be 15 people. Well, that's a big committee, especially for one that has to have quorums. <laughs> um, okay, that's all my questions. Thank you very much. I don't have the paper agenda. Adjournment, adjournment is the last item. So I make a motion to adjourn? Well, you would ask for a motion. You're the chair. You don't necessarily have to make or can't make motions. I will make a motion to adjourn at 6.58. Second. Okay. okay, roll call vote. Oh, I'll do that. E Evan? Aye. Karen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Debbie? Aye. Dick? Aye. Lou? Aye. Jerry? Madam Chair? Aye. And we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks for stepping up, Josie. Thank you. 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 Thank you.